Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. Today we will continue understanding about clock skew. We will understand what are the different types and how can we minimize it. In previous video, we explained that in real world the designs are synchronous, which means that all the flip flops has to be triggered simultaneously and hence designers try to minimize the skew as much as possible. Because of this placement of clock source and flip flops becomes very important and challenging. Let us consider this example where we had two different flip flops, FF1 and ff2 and let's say the clock pin of ff1 is let's say p1 and clock pin of ff2 is let's say p2 and they both are triggered by the same clock and let's say their clock source name is s1 which is sitting here so let's connect it with wire like this now the clock will be traveling from s1 to p1 and the clock will be traveling also from s1 to p2 so it will taking some time to reach p1 and it will take some amount of time to reach to p2 that amount of time is nothing but the latency of the clock to reach p1 and latency of the clock to reach p2 so let's say that latency is l1 when it is trying to reach to p1 and that latency is l2 when it is trying to reach to p2 so the skew is nothing but the difference between the latency of the flip-flop clock pins so let's say skew is here l2 minus l1 now let us assume a different case we have a previous setup like this where we had two different flip-flops triggered by the same clock but let's say we have two more flip-flops which are also triggered by the same clock source now let's say the clock source is sitting here and its name is c and let's say this flip-flop is f1 this flip-flop name is f2 this flip-flop name is f3 and this flip flop is f4 and we have already told you what the latency means it means that the time taken by the clock to reach from source to destination so the latency for the flip flop one is let's say t1 that means t1 is the time taken by the clock to reach from c to the clock pin of f1 similarly the latency of flip flop 2 f2 is t2 and for f3 it is t3 and for f4 it is t4 why we are saying that latency is different in each case because we can clearly see that the wire length is also looking different so obviously it will take different amount of time to reach to every different clock pin and we already told you when you are calculating skew in previous case it was s1 skew was t2 minus t1 that was the skew between the above two flip flops and the data was flowing from q to d pin here also the data is flowing between these two flip flops and hence this case is independent of the above case here the skew will be s2 and it will be t4 minus t3 what we are trying to tell you here is that for every different data path there is a different skew so this data path has different skew and this data path is different skew which are coming from the same common clock source hence the skew here for the above data path is local skew for this path and this is also a local skew for this path also there is something called as global skew which is nothing but the latency is between the shortest latency and the largest latency of the clock in our example let us assume that t1 is the shortest latency and t4 is the largest latency hence the global skew g will be t4 that is the largest latency minus the smallest latency that is t1 that is all for today we hope you understood everything about this topic if you have any doubts please ask them in comment section our email id is also mentioned in the description and about a section of the channel please do like share subscribe to the channel thank you